everybody, and welcome to the Select Start Podcast. I'm your host, Brian, and today I'd like to talk to you guys about Pokemon Go and uh, essentially the Pokemon Go effect. But first, I want to talk to you guys a bit about the news I'm on the podcast. This is episode two uh, for August the 4th, 2016. Uh, right now, uh, we've actually picked an intro song, so you should have heard a part of that as a uh, lead into the uh, the show. Um, and my co-host Chris and I, who have been working together on setting up the show in and of itself, uh, are still trying to figure out the best way to record Skype uh, into. Uh, we're, now we're using Adobe Audition. Um, and put us onto two different channels. We're able to kind of put us together uh, onto one channel, which we might do just to kind of get uh, us both talking about a couple of the shows that we've got planned out and the various topics there. But for the time being, right now you're just hearing my voice, obviously. So um, we're still working on getting that uh, figured out. I've been doing a lot of Googling, but I uh, look forward to, you know, I'm looking forward to to bring him on and actually having um, some dialogue regarding the various uh, topics and things like that that uh, I think that we would provide obviously an interesting perspective on. So um, anyway, that's uh, that kind of covers essentially the news section. It's a slow uh, news week here in the middle of the summer before everything kicks off. So uh, for those of you who are tuning in in the future, obviously, uh, the Xbox uh, One S has launched this week. Very exciting stuff. Don't I'm not getting one of I was kind of in the same band of well i'll save up and wait to see what this xbox project scorpio really is so anyway the uh that seems to launch been um would love to see that get my hands on uh, an xbox one s at some point in the future looks to be very nice i like that the power brick is no longer a thing for the s and hopefully uh, it's going to be the same for the true for project scorpio anyway on to our main topic so Today, I want to talk to you guys about the Pokemon Go effect uh, and what does it really, what does it mean? So obviously a lot of people have been saying, uh, you know, with the, this huge overnight success of Pokemon Go, uh, it seems that industry uh, veterans tend to always flock to the same question. Like, well, how long can this last? How long can they get millions and millions and millions of daily active users and for my kind of thoughts on the subject, I don't, who cares? Like it's, uh, it's an interesting thing to watch because, um, just looking around, I've, I've never seen the park more active in Texas in the summer, uh, than I've ever seen uh, over the last 20 years, at least I've never ever witnessed that. And there are people with water bottles going out and having fun at the park, catching Pokemon. Um, for myself, like my wife and I, and even my daughter will go out and we'll go on Pokemon walks. We've had friends that have, uh, come by and said, Hey, let's, let's go out and see if we can't uh, catch anything. It's really, you know, for all that it is and isn't, it is really an interesting social kind of, uh, cultural butterfly <laughs> whatever would be something that'd be rare and beautiful uh and even if it only lasts a little while um i'm still kind of grateful f- for this effect there's been a lots of conversation on it and really the re- and, and the whole point i bring that up and talk about that because this so it really isn't about pokemon go and this also this podcast isn't solely dedicated to nintendo even though the last you know, you see our first two episodes seem to be heavily Nintendo focused. But for me, playing Pokemon Go really got me excited and wanted uh, and I wanted to play more Pokemon of kind of the traditional sense. So as a part of that, um, I have actually gone out and got uh, the uh, Pokemon Alpha Sapphire for the 3DS. So one effect of Pokemon Go so far, at least, you know, for me, has been the fact that I've actually charged my 3DS, which has kind of been, you know, kind of sitting there. It's a great system, but, uh, you know, it is something that I, I play seasonally and it's been a very long dry season for using my 3DS. So I was like, well, let me go out and, and charge the, the 3DS. And actually, so I tried to go and find a used copy like at a GameStop or even online. Wasn't able to do that. They were uh, they were so kind, the people at GameStop, trying to look up a, a location in which that might have a, a used copy of Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire. And there wasn't any um, in the area that I, that I could see. But... Um, Anyway, so what I was working on, uh, I ended up deciding is just to download the uh, the application to the 3DS uh, on its own. So I have a digital download of that. Now, most of uh, my games, especially for this generation, have literally all been um, 
uh, digital. And so I have not bought a cart in a, in over a couple of years now. And so this was kind of nice for me to feel like I could go back and actually experience that and, uh, and work with that in and of itself. So, um, I downloaded the game. It cost just as much as it, pro- it, it it's cost when it launched in 2014. And that's kind of one of the things that Nintendo really, I guess, doesn't do that all the other companies and games do is that they really keep their products, um, at a particular price, they they you know you rarely I rarely see discounts. Uh, so Pokemon Go used was thirty six bucks here in in the Dallas area, and Pokemon Go new was forty dollars. And so downloading it was the same price at forty dollars. So that's you know the first effect is that I went out and actually had me buy a Pokemon game. The last Pokemon game that I played was Black and White, and um, for me I was just wondering because I was playing it and I just wasn't as into it. Uh, but for the for some reason. Um, I've really been enjoying my time with that, uh, with this version of Alpha uh, Sapphire, which, oh, sorry, yeah, Alpha Sapphire. <laughs> um, and it's just been, it's been really great. And so there's, you know, I'm still playing Pokemon Go, still going on walks, uh, and I'm still um, and, and now, you know, sometimes on my 3DS, I am playing a more traditional Pokemon game. And I'm also interested in seeing what they have coming out. And so a part of the excitement for the Nintendo NX is that, you know, maybe we'll actually have a, a true Pokemon game that can be played both on my TV and on the go. And it really, you know, it'll be interesting to see if they bring in any other uh, features or any other uh, thought based off of that. But that's one effect um, that it's had on me. And the question that I wonder... Um, and hopefully we'll, you know, who knows, maybe at the end of August, we'll see anything if there's any kind of sales uptick of Pokemon games for Nintendo. So Nintendo came out and said that, you know, there's not going to be any major effect on the, on their bottom line. Um, and that, that makes complete sense to me from their perspective, because just of the matter of ownership and how much they actually probably get per, you know, purchase on the app store for these games. And so, uh, the kind of the idea is, is that, well, maybe it, we'll see, they'll see a big uptick in sales of their other games. And that's kind of what I'm hoping for now. Um, you know, in the first episode, if you didn't, you know, haven't heard it, you know, it's a little bit, you know, rough on the, on the cuts and same thing as probably as this one is. Um, but the reality is, is that, um, if it has an effect on them and they're able to become profitable and have an exciting system, I'm all for that. I I like that idea. But if it doesn't, um, I hope that that we can still get Nintendo games just in a third party fashion uh, at that point. So anyway, I'm rooting for Nintendo to win me back. I'm rooting for, I'm looking forward to September. It's going to be an interesting month, but so Pokemon go, um, the other effects that I've seen. So we were at, uh, we were at mass as a family on Sunday and, um, we're leaving. And one of the kids, you know, that's around us, uh, as we're leaving, uh, leaving church, uh, looks up to his mom and says, no, thanks, mom. Uh, we're going to walk home, referring to him and his brother who are going to walk home playing Pokemon Go. This ties right back to just this social and this exploratory and this adventure-esque uh, move, um, the movement that they have with these AR games. And for me, that hopefully will help lead us into some of those type of games in other fashions. I hope, you know, I, I joked and I tweeted out that I would love to see a Zelda go where the, it would force me to go explore the sewers again like I did when I was a kid, Goonies style, but uh, (laughs) I don't think that's necessarily a practicality. But with this hopefully spurring others to, you know, uh, look at the Pokemon Go franchise as a whole, maybe more mobile and AR games will help people to take a look at other franchises that have long gone, uh, you know, um, un- untouched or unlooked at uh, for a long time. So like Nintendo's announced, like uh, uh, Animal Crossing is, is coming and then, oh man, I, f- I forgot, I apologize. Anyway, so they've announced, and we'll, I'm wondering if based off of having just that mobile presence, if that mobile presence feeds into their overall awareness, are people aware of Nintendo? And that is really the key point, and I think one of the main struggles that Nintendo has had uh, over the last several years is that video games are a conversation. They're a conversation with friends. They're a conversation with strangers. They're a conversation on the internet. They are uh, kind of this badge, and it allows you, just like any kind of TV show that everybody's watching, to be a part of that conversation. And for a while, Nintendo has really sat out of that conversation because they haven't been where the people are. Uh, they were, you know, for the longest time, like with the NES, SNES, and then uh, a couple generations, the Wii, the real leading uh 
points of conversation. And so now that with the internet, with YouTube, with podcasts, with all of these different ways and media that people consume, Nintendo hasn't adapted to that that model and that structure. You see them blocking out YouTube. You see them doing these various um, anti um, kind of social networking of views. And two, whether they're right or wrong about their properties and their uh, their IP is one thing, but. People just aren't talking about them, and what, and that's kind of the the other effect of the po- of Pokemon Go is that it's brought Nintendo forefront back into the conversation. More people are talking about it, and and, and they're talking about it in that kind of same way that anybody would talk about it. You see the news talk about anything, um, anything that's successful. How long can it last? Uh, here are the problems. These people have gotten beat up, but. It, with those negative headlines, it's obviously going to attract, you know, clicks and questions and that kind of traffic. And in a, in a media, in a advertising driven kind of market, that just makes kind of sense. But the I wanted to talk about just the positive side, the the social aspects, the friendships that are, that I've, that are forming, the conversations that I've been having with strangers. It it's a common language that sets everybody uh, apart and brings everybody together. We were at a, a blood drive uh, again at the at our church, and uh, during that, that's when the uh, kind of the, the shootings in, in uh, Louisiana were going on, and everybody there. Um, of every background was together and was sad. And right before that, we were all talking about Pokemon Go. And then we prayed. Anyway, uh, for episode two for the Select Star Podcast, I'm your host, Brian. Thank you for listening. <laughs>